Well, it's a month later and I'm here. My name is Katinka. I'm from the Eastern Cape of South Africa and I live in a small little village next to the coast and I actually quite love it. It's beautiful. Um, most days we have wind. That's not so much fun. I mean, last week the east wind was blowing and it was so depressing. You know, even the animals get depressed. I had to give poor Sinatra some rescue remedy. Sinatra is the husky. So he's my beautiful big boy, but <laughs> he's such a baby. So anyway, at one stage I was like, you know, that thunder strapping where you put like bandages around their chest to pull it in so that they don't get so stressed. And I was giving him rescue remedy, putting butter. And I think he was stressed. He was actually pretending to be stressed so he could get more butter because he loves butter. So anyway. Today, oh, I'm still saying anyway, I've been working on it, but I'm not very successful. Today, I'm drinking coffee in my pear mug. It was last year's birthday present from a friend, or the year before, no, last year. And I just love this mug. And I'm drinking dough adverts, no milk, no sugar, because that spoils the coffee. And it's an instant coffee. I do like percolated coffee, but sometimes I prefer this because it's quicker. To make the coffee and then set the machine and all for one person and then wash the machine. I don't mind making it. It's washing the stuff. That's what gets to me. So the last time I spoke to you, I was speaking about my meter cardigan. Yes. And I was going to wear it, but like I said, it's beginning of summer. I think I said it. Oh, maybe it was one of the deleted parts. So it is summer. We are early summer and it's beautiful. There's no wind today, which is awesome because mostly we have wind. We had such east winds last week. I told you that. So there's no wind, there's a slight breeze, which is beautiful because it's quite warm. And it's one of those perfect light days, you know, if you, if I, I was, I was so tempted to take my camera, so I had to choose, am I going to do a podcast or am I going to play with my camera? So I decided to do the podcast, but it's just perfect light out there. And I just love it. Oh, this is an ultra here in my eye. Okay, now it's out. So let's get back to the meter part again. I was going to wear it. This morning was cold enough and it was windy enough, but now... It is not, so let me show you that first. The meter was designed by Andy Sutherland. Um, she's a designer that does kind of like vintage inspired, like um, cardigans and jerseys and stuff. Her work's beautiful and her patterns are really well written. This wool is, um, this yarn is wool from, it's fisherman's wool from, um, uh, oh, Lion brand. Okay, so <laughs> when I was in America, my friend Elizabeth, I was sorting out her her, her salad, and so she said, no, you must take what you want. So I didn't want to be greedy, so I took this two bowls of wool, of yarn, and a few other things. And I was so impressed. So this, apparently, I read up on it. So it's like this lion brand have like five different colors, especially the fisherman's. This is the fisherman's wool. So there's five different colors. And it's the color of the sheep, it's not dyed. But the difference, it's quite interesting because this part, like the brown part, is a bit more hard than this, this part, this, this beige biscuit color. I can't remember the colorways. It's written on the thing, but I've lost them. So there's my cardigan. I did make it a bit longer. I think I made it like two repeats longer at the bottom before I did that part. I designed this part. I decided I wanted lace at the bottom. So, um, I've got a pattern Bible type of book, which gives you like through the ages, different designs. And I adapted one of their borders. But I don't pick this part so often because every time, you know, because I, I knitted it on. So I, I didn't, the stitch count had to add up so that they could get together here at the same end up at the same part right there. And um, I think I unpicked it like five times. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I was, the one time I was just that much left over and I realized it's not going to work. And so, yes, it was really a patient thing, but I'm so glad I did it. And then the sleeves in her um, cardigan online, I think it's more like a summer cardigan. So her sleeves ends there, so I made mine longer. I made an extra long because I like my things to sit there because sometimes my wrists are quite painful. And then it's nice to have wool that goes over it to keep it warm. And originally I did have the border on the edge. But it didn't look so nice, so I just unpicked it and I did a, a one by one rip. And now I'm going to show you the inside. These buttons, so let me tell you about the buttons first. 
years ago, I think for my 27th birthday, a friend of mine's mother gave me a massive bottle, a bottle like this, full of buttons, metal buttons. I don't know where she found it, but that was my birthday present. And I always thought it was very cool. But you know, sometimes when you get that type of things, oh, there's Pinky behind us. Oh, she loves that table. And that thing there where she's smelling, that is actually a meat grinder that my dad gave me. That was like his, my mom's family. Her mom and dad used to live on a farm and so they would make their own mints and stuff and they would use that meat grinder up back there so I put it up there and I put my scissors in there that I use a lot and my my pins and my my pens and pencils so I sat down with my bottle <laughs> all over the show sorry I sat down with my bottle and I sorted my buttons into parts and I actually because you know what I'm at a place where I do not want to spend money because Things are expensive. And why go and buy stuff if you already have stuff? Because also, I've really been thinking about the whole thing about um, sustainable fashion. So now we, we say we're making stuff and it's, it's good for the environment because we're making it and it's about slow fashion. But then we go out and we buy all these things that we think we need, but actually we have it in our house. So I was contemplating using like the same size but different types of buttons on here if I couldn't find the same ones. But when I went through the bottle... I find these military ones, it reminds me of like the military jackets of like the Civil War in America. I think the French or the English had buttons like this on their jackets. So I found these buttons and they were enough. Look at that. And the nice thing about it, it's metal but they're light. Because I don't like a cardigan when the, when the buttons are too heavy because then it pulls down to the front. So then on the inside, um, uh, oh, I want to tell you. So I didn't have to weave in any ends except at the ends. Are like literally on the edges not nowhere where I had to bind on and um, add wool or stuff that I have to um, do ends because the slow now what's her name um her name is ah uh, I forgot uh, the gentle knitter it's a podcast oh she's got such a beautiful aesthetics in her whole setup anyway she explained that if you have wool it must be wool then you can actually like fold it together. So you take the two pieces, you like come together and you pull the one through the one and the one through the other and then you just literally rub it like this. And it and you can't see where it was joined and it's so strong, it doesn't come loose. So I've done that with this and I'm so impressed. It is so easy because I literally just had to like weave in those ends and then um, the ones at the bottom. And then on the inside of the button band. So... Because I was willing, I, I used to knit a lot. I mean, I knitted in my life, I've, I think I've knitted about 200 or 300 jerseys um, and cardigans. Not so many cardigans, but more jerseys. I was obsessive compulsive and I was knitting for a shop. And I would just, um, like, mold them out. And um, I never used the pattern because I could just figure it out, you know. So I would think up all these things. I mean, there was this one that was actually three dimensional. It was like cubes. And then the one side was light pink. It was gray. The background was dark gray. Or light gray. And then the one side was light, like a dirty pink. And the other side was dirty purple. Hand spun wool. And then on top, the cube formed in light, in dark gray. And this whole front of the jersey had these cubes on. And the lady wanted the pattern. And I couldn't give it to her because I just figured it out as I was knitting. So anyway, I've knitted a lot in my life. But like I said, when my hands got painful, I stopped knitting because it was really, I couldn't knit more than six stitches and my hands would go numb. And um, so this time I decided I'm going to use a, a pattern. I'm not going to be afraid to unpick and I'm going to enjoy the process. So I gave myself the whole of, of uh, I think I started, yeah, the whole of October basically. So what I also did is I actually sewed on some ribbon to keep the button band from stretching because that sometimes happens when you do it. And then I've got quite a sensitive skin and this is rustic yarn. So rustic yarn, no matter what you do, it is a bit scratchy. Um, the first time I put it on, it was like I couldn't get it off quickly enough. But I find the more I put it on, the better I get. So maybe I can train my skin to get used to it. I also like the increases here for, for the bosom. Because, you know, as women, we have curves. But I didn't do so many because my curves are very limited. I think my sister's got it all. So <laughs> I think they stood in line. When we stood in line in heaven for our boob size, they said, give it all. And I got what was left over. But I don't mind. And then for the neck, I put this binding. It's like a um, 1960s um, vice binding, those white ones. I'm going to take it off because it's actually quite stiff up here. It's, it's, and it stands up a little bit. So what I was thinking, I have like t-shirting in this color. So 
So I'm going to just take some t-shirting and give it a facing on there. So that is my meter wow. cardigan. And it's done. And I'm going to show you another finished project. So, I am learning about colour work. But so, I'm not going to finish, show you the finished project. Let me show you the colour work I'm busy with. So, um, my friend from Norway bought me this wool I taught you last time about. And it's living in my new little bag that I made from my fat quarters that came from America. I just love it. Look at this. Isn't it cute? And I put my name on there. And then I lined it with some material I had on the inside. And it's a little drawstring bag, which I love because then the zipper doesn't caught the wool. So anyway, I love the, the whole craze at the moment is salbu mittens. There's this girl called Ali from Scandia Knits. And she does a lot of them. She designed them. But now with the South African rand, for me to buy a pattern on Ravelry, it's just really expensive. And it's, you know, for, for knitting it once and paying, like, your week's bread and milk money, that's a bit much. <laughs> so, I went online and I found this, this lady called um, Rick Moore's Salbe Mittens. So, she is from Norway. And she just put these mittens on it for free um, from the 1940s that she found some. And I was very thankful. So I, I don't mind paying for stuff. And I really try to buy stuff from people. But if I can find something that looks like what I want. Then I'm going to use it. Because it's just budget wise. You can't always do what you, you want to. So look at this. I've got the first one done. I just, this one you have to weave in the end. In the end because <laughs> it, it ends there. So it's going to be a present for a friend of mine. And it's knitted out of my, this one. Ruma from Norway. I'm so amazed by this wool. It is awesome. So look at that. That's before it was blocked and washed. And this is when it's blocked and washed. Look how nice it becomes. It's like it, it plumps out and it becomes like a one piece of material. And I really, really like this. But it's hot. So this is going to a friend overseas because uh, we live in Africa. It doesn't get that cold. If I, I'm, I hope there's enough wool over because I would like to make myself some half mittens in the same pattern i think that could be very nice and i could see myself using that here so then um also this alley girl she said that um for blocking her mittens she just cut it out of some foam or something i had this plastic floating around i did give it a thumb it didn't work the thumb is here somewhere so what i do is i put this in and then i put the thumb into the thumb and then i just put them up with a pack and i let them dry and it actually works very well so i was very chuffed so that is my Salbe Mittens from Rick Moore's, Sal Rick Moore's Salbe Mittens, the second pair. Um, there's another pair that I found with, that she also did. And um, I think I'm going to knit that as well. But I need to get more of this wool. So I've got, this is the first time I did color work. So as you can see, it's not perfect. But you know what? I love the process. And it's amazing. You know, this is the second one I'm doing. And it's immediate already. It's much better. Um, I still struggle with the floats. So the floats are these inside things. I, this, this I got right, but I'm going to show you now. I've got another piece. So I'm just going to put this all back into its little owl bag. It's so pretty. You guys are so lucky. You know, you can find this material here in South Africa, but you really struggle. It's not r readily available. I mean, I found this at Walmart. Walmart's a cool place. I like that place. So anyway, there's my little bag with my Zelda mittens. Oh, let me put my sample back in. <clears throat> and then, my f uh, so I decided, okay, color work's not that difficult. I'm actually going to do my own thing. So last year for this friend that got married, um, for her birthday, we went to the Kruger National Park. And there was this one area where there was tons of elephants. Elephants everywhere. The problem is that we used to call the elephants in the, in the national parks in South Africa. And um, then they would sell some of the ivory and that would actually pay to, to stay, to, to, to look after the national parks. But now there's this whole thing, and I understand it for elephants and the whole thing of pouching and stuff. But the problem is there's so many elephants that they actually are ruining the land. You have never seen it. It looked like, it, it looked like a, I almost want to say it looked like a bomb went off. So there's like massive areas where you drive where all the trees are broken in half because these elephants, especially the young ones, they get really destructive. And they would just go and break all the trees down. And then they would eat the bark and then they would leave these trees. So it's literally like kilometers of land where the trees are just broken in pieces. And the sad part is that land's going to die because the trees are part of the ecosystem. So I don't know what they're going to do 
there's something needs to change and also you can't relocate the elephant because elephants are very um territorial and also they they're, they're part of family so if you relocate them you have to relocate the whole family because at one stage they would keep the young ones and then let them try and form their own tribes but become delinquents because there's no there's not the matriarch to sort to, to look after them so i don't know what they're going to do but it's becoming a problem a big problem maybe they need to get contraceptives for elephants that could work hmm Anyway, so I decided to do a color work of elephants. And I'm going to call, I so said it was extremely dry at that stage in the Kruger Park. Extremely dry. Oh my gosh, it was bad. I don't think in that area they had rain for like two years properly. And so um, I got inspired by the whole thing of the drought and just these poor animals looking for water. And so I did this design, this color work design. And I'm calling it Elephants at the Fountain, at the Water Fountain. So there's the little fountain, and there's my little elephant. So it's not very clear because my floats have been a disaster on this one. So when I knit with thicker, it can, it's a bit better now that I've blocked it. So, oh, look, you can see it in the back. So when I knit with thicker wool, I, I kind of struggle to get the tension right. But I'm going to work on this, and I'm going to get it right. So I'll knit a few more until I get it right, and then I'll write the pattern up and put it for free on the Ravelry for other people like me who can't afford to buy all the patterns out there. So look at that. There's my elephants at the water hole. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, it's just pulling. Let me try that one. So um, I've done a design. It goes over, I think it's, you know, I can't remember over how many stitches, but I just repeated it three times. So this is the leftover wool of my, my fisherman's wool. And there was enough, I can't believe how much wool is on one of those skeins. I only have the two skeins. And I actually finished my, my cardigan and I still have a skein like this left over of this brown. But, and I've already knitted another hat. So that's another thing that's finished. Why did I tell you? Oh, color work. So that's that. A finished object. So the next thing, um, all these, I had some amazing friends that actually, when I went over to America, they were really so good to me and they looked after me and they were just amazing. So I've decided I'm going to make them handmade presents for all of them. So this is my hand spun, um, yeah, no, it's not Angora, hand spun alpaca. This is the color for that alpaca fleece. And I'm knitting a little, also a beanie. It looks small, but it's just the circumference of the needle. It's actually big enough. So it's, I've just started with that. And it's living in my little birdie bag. Click there, that's my birdie bag. So this material I had, this I got in America, this I got in America, and then I lined it with the material I had, and I put a zip in, and I put a little bead on the zip. And I've got my little loaf there, which I actually quite like. I've always had that, but I need to get labels printed. Or no, I actually want woven labels, but I haven't found a place that I can afford. Because you know, when you um, order, it's not real. It's really expensive if you go just small amounts. So I need to go a big amount but then even if it's cheaper it's still a lot of money that you have to give out at once and then i've made this one now i'm i've had my market soon i think it's like oh, oh i think it's next weekend i need to get my button to here so i'm going to sell some of these bags at the market i think somebody nope it's not my gate it's the other gate so i'm going to sell the rest of these bags at the market so there's one and then this is for a friend of mine who lost her mom recently and her mom loved owls. So I'm going to give her this one. And then there's this one. I'm still finishing up putting the drawstrings in. So the one is in. I still need to do the other one. And then there's a few others that I'm still busy with. So back to the buttons. So I sat last night and I sorted all the buttons. Now it doesn't look like they're all the same but they basically are. And I can just go through all these little bags and then find whatever I'm looking for. And there's another little box with buttons in it. So I'm very excited about that. I'm going to actually use the buttons that I have. Very exciting. Then I can see, I'm sure you've seen this beautiful cable cardigan. Now I've got a thing about cables. And I've got a thing about iron jerseys. And I've, I've been trying to knit myself one for years. And every time I knit it, then I give it away. So a friend of mine. Um, her friend threw some stuff out and she found this cardigan <laughs> but I'm going to show you it is huge huge I like things big but I do think <laughs> this is a bit big <laughs> yeah, I think it's a bit big 
<laughs> so I've been looking at it thinking how I'm going to change it and the other problem is I know this is wool because it's scratchy but also I know this is wool because it's been moth eaten and this has been hand knitted so I've been looking at different ways of trying to salvage it and to change it but I've come to the conclusion that I will have to re-knit it because it's just too big no matter what I do I cannot use what is there here already but I do want to use this this wool because it's um, it's not hand spun but this is 100% wool because um, oh, this is 100% wool because also the mops won't eat it if it was if it had more synthetic in it yep this is 100% wool so I've decided I'm going to unpick this and I'm going to knit myself a jersey so that's the other thing um, well, yarn is quite expensive um, good yarn and like I said I'm on a budget so I need to make plans and this is one of the plans I came up with so watch this space I first have to unpick this and then now I'm going to show you some of the amazing things that came my way recently oh, and I'm so blessed so my friend who got married sent me some chocolates I ate them this was unbelievable it's like little shells and it's called chocolate Carlsbad Beach Pebbles Carlsbad Gourmet I think she got it in California it was amazing it was really amazing then another friend of mine look at this she was sorting out her stuff and she took out which the stuff that she's gonna throw away and stuff and look at this I'm so excited about this it's too beautiful to use it is little test tubes with beads in it isn't this just amazing look at that little cork on there it is just so beautiful I love it and I have a needle that I can beat with this so I think I need to do something because I've got a lot of these but um, this will be a play project in between so since I spoke to you last time I did the wedding all the green stuff I'll, I'll insert a photo oh look these bubbles um, so that was the, the bridesmaid's dress that was hanging here at one of my previous podcasts and so it was two bridesmaids dresses a mother of the bride a grandmother and a flower girl so that one got finished then I had to do another order for a, a wedding guest and she wanted a beautiful line dress that fitted her like a glove so I did that that was fun in between I sorted some things in the house I've been spinning the raw wool um, and having fun with that my fleece my, my aim is to actually get to a place where I've gone through the fleece so next my friend from America sent me this back I went to her mom last weekend to go and visit and there was a whole <laughs> box of stuff for me so when I got in the airplane I put some of my things in here and then I dropped it back and it tore so what I've decided is, I know it's just a normal bag, but you know, we don't get this beautiful type of things here. So it's a Joanne, Joanne bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it with this. And then at the top, put a zip in. And um, that will also fix this. And I'm going to replace this bias binding because it's a, just a cheap bias binding. And um, yeah, I'm going to replace it most likely with bias binding that I make out of this. And then I'm going to use it for my big projects for a knitting bag. And also this, I think I will have to open it because, um, yeah, I'm going to open it and just put some of this on the back. Because I love that, but it's not going to last because it's, it's basically plastic. But I really think that this will just make such a beautiful project bag for my bigger stuff. So watch this space. Next up. Oh, I know, I'm talking a lot and it's like a show and tell today. But oh man, I am so, so blessed and so thankful. So I have this petticoat, no, it's, it's a petticoat as well, but I have this top that went all over the world. So it was, it's called, it's called the Sister of the Traveling Top. And um, it started out, I made it, uh, it was my favorite top and I sent it to a friend in Sweden and then it went all over the world and it came back to me recently after a year and a half. And when it came back to me, I'll put in a photo of it and I'll put the hashtag so you can go on Instagram and have a look when it came back to me it had all these beautiful goodies with it so I'm actually at a place so some of the things were wrapped in this this is something else I'm going to put it up there um, so this was the letter I sent to all the all the people who participated with a photo of me wearing the top I think you can see it I think 
and some of my friends. So um, it says, Dear host, I love traveling and seeing, seeing new places. I dream of different climates and cultures, languages and accents, and spending time with people whose lives um, and see who's, who see life from a different angle. Sadly, with my money units, the, the depreciation and all the cost of visas and plane tickets, I'm not able to explore the places that I dream of. So I decided to send my favorite top on a traveling adventure and live vicariously through her for the next year. So here it goes. This is my favorite top. I made it two years ago because I was hot and fat and needed something to wear over my two tight spaghetti string tops. Then winter came and it became one of my favorite layering pieces. I do an arts market once a month and love the sandwich carrier pocket. It's handy dandy for my phone and the hammer and any other odds and ends that's floating around at the time. So it fits in perfectly with my life's philosophy. All good outer clothes have pockets. But to tell you the truth, I'm contemplating making some underclothes like knickers with small pockets for a key. I don't have big boobs, so a bra with pocket won't work for me. But I think there's a pat patent waiting to be, <laughs> to be patented. Now, if you are reading this letter, then it means you have accepted the invitation to give the top a home in your wardrobe for a month. And then I just gave some guidelines. And it was so much fun just to watch her on Instagram and to see how she was traveling and going all over the world. And it was really lovely to see how people just dressed her up and went shopping with her and picked up uh, fetch eggs but sadly when I lost my Instagram account um, like I said Instagram just decided to delete it uh, I lost all of that so some people have sent me photos and some photos I still have on my computer but I'm going to try and do a little video of just some of the photos I have but when she came back to me all of these things oh there's some buttons was pinned to her and part of her so there was this little little um vintage i always want to say it in german taschentuch um hanky handkerchief and then look at this this is a little lavender bag made out of beautiful beautiful antique linen look how it's stitched up there can you see isn't it beautiful and then one friend lives close to disneyland she gave me because every girl needs a mirror she gave me a disney pin a Cinderella pen with a mirror. I love it. And then my one friend from America, Wendy. Wendy. Oh, I can't remember her surname. She did this by hand. Isn't it gorgeous? With a little, and I just added a little pin at the back so I can wear it as a brooch. And I cannot remember who did this. I must actually find out. But then this one came along. And then there is this. And Lynn loves paper. She is so talented. She did this. Isn't it gorgeous? And there's a bracelet that I actually have been wearing. I need to, I don't know where it is. Um, that another girl called Raspberry Treats made. And then this is from Sweden from our friend Alma from Alma Vacation. And this one as well, Sweden. And then some vintage buttons. Look at these vintage buttons. And then my friend Wendy um, from Wendy Snapshots, who's taking a break from Instagram for a while, had all these different things that she had put in. Look at this bag of buttons that also came. And look at this beautiful, dainty, vintage. Um, this is from Liana, from Liana's World. And this one is from Glenda, from Karani Glenda. And then... So everything was packed in these different bags and this one was sewed up with everything inside and when I got it I didn't have a quick and pick. She said, Anna, you must just cut it and I thought, no, there's no way I'm going to cut it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Then I'm going to sew all of these little things on top of this. There was also this little thing. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. And some other odds and ends and some old lace from Elizabeth and she also embroidered on the thing. And just some ribbons and a little notepad. And there was a beautiful bracelet. Where is it? Um, another bracelet. Oh, here it is. This is from Wendy. And it says, Inspire. Oh, this is so stunning. I just love it. And then there's a little brooch that I can use. No, this came from my aunt. Oh, sorry. It's something else. <laughs> for for sh my shawl. I'm going to knit a shawl one day. Watch this space. I'm going to knit a shawl. So yes, I'm going to take this back 
I'm going to add the, 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 the little lankies onto it and on the front and the back then I'm going to put a lining in to make it stronger because this is really old and I'm going to use this as a knitting bag or maybe just as a bag, handbag and then there was this little linen bag which I'm also going to line and give it a zip and then I can use this as a project bag as well oh, and look at this one this is from um, I think it's Sharon so Sewing Life from the UK and oh it's so stunning so there's been, oh, oh, no, is it so enough? No, this is little, um, oh, I can't remember, little acorn, I think. But I've been so inspired and so blessed by all of this, because I didn't send the top to get stuff back. What I said is, just embroider something small on the top and then send it on to the next person and maybe, you know, um, put your name on it or something like that. So it's been very exciting to get all of these things to come my way. And that's, I've, I've just been so thankful. And like I said, I will try and put in sort of photo. I'm busy learning how to do that. Okay. Oh, I need some more coffee. P. Wendy. P. Wendy is the one. Other Wendy. There were two Wendy. She's from America. Now, she phoned, she messaged me and she said to me, listen, um, I love Tina Givens. Now, I can actually design and make draw up patterns like this, and I've done it before. But sometimes it's nice to actually just use a pattern. Uh, you know, when you all your life, life, all your life, <laughs> all your life, have to just make do with what you have. It's sometimes so nice to to get a pattern of, of something that you know. This is not even really available in South Africa. I can download it, but I can't really go and buy it. So she said to me, "I'll I'll send you some some pattern a pattern. Go and look. Up. There's a sale and go and choose one." So I didn't know which one, and I actually wanted it to be a surprise. So I said. I, I, I choose like four and I said listen choose one of those because those are the ones I like and I didn't know which ones were available and she sent me three patterns all from Tina Givens and I haven't opened them yet because I first wanted to show and I haven't had time yet actually it's been really busy so that's the one and this is the other one and what was really nice is another friend of mine went to America for work and she so they just sent the stuff to her and she brought it back and then there's this one so I'm sure you've seen this heap lying here so this is all materials that came from Elizabeth and Lihanna and I bought some and I'm going to use these materials to make some of these things oh, look at that isn't it beautiful oh so excited and it's like old um, Irish linen serviettes I'm going to really have fun with those and just some odds and ends and I'm really excited about that so that's waiting for me I first have to finish all my work before I can do that and then this is another goodie bag oh, you guys are gonna get so tired <laughs> sorry sorry so it's a hat pattern from Elizabeth and just some patterns I want to make and this is like a and I'm gonna just send it back oh, why is it stopping no, it's not stopping. Okay, sorry. And that's someone's. Look at this. Now this is just exquisite. This is a 1930s beaded collar. And I've got two of those, which I'm going to use on this jacket. I'm going to make a jacket out of that. Look at that, how beautiful that is. So watch this face. This is going to become a jacket. Very excited. So excited. I can't tell you. You know, sometimes it's like things come your way and it's just so awesome. And then there was like this piece of old vintage lace. And this, oh, this is just beautiful. So this is quite a long piece. And another piece of lace. I think this one was from Lihanna. It's also an old piece. Um, it's not very big, but I can play with it. And then there is this lace here. Oh, I love lace. I love lace. And there was this little doily. And some vintage ribbon. And some beautiful buttons, vintage buttons. And some silk hand-dyed ribbon. Look at this lace. There's quite a lot. And then Leanna always teases me because I make stuff out of curtains. So she got me a curtain. I don't know what to do with this yet, but I'm going to make something with the space and something was was actually tied um like wrapped up in this don't pull don't pull 
Okay, let me show you. If you pull that, this whole thing is going to unpick. So let me just save it quickly. Mm. Bam. That will work. No, no, I'll save it later. And then I've got um, some cat boots and I love these shoelaces. I'm going to put them in my cat boot, it's like grey ones. And there's some beautiful crochet in cotton. I can't even find this anymore. Um, thin ones. Now in, um, what's that movie? It's like a 1930s one of this big house. You see, I don't have television, so I don't watch it that often. <laughs> but I see sometimes, I see stuff online. And um, it's just this, oh, I can't remember, it's this big house and this family living in the house and then there's all these um, Serbians and stuff. It's quite famous, anyway. But there's, in one of the scenes, there's this, this little, little 1930s crocheted hat. But fine cotton. And I want a hat like that. So, there's my cotton. I'm going to crochet it. Might take some time though. And then there's just some roses, material roses, which I love. And I, oh yes, and then my friend from America, Annalia, and the one who got married, she sent me this. And this is begging to be a quilt. But quilting takes a lot of time, and I really don't have it at the moment, so I'm just going to pack it away like this and keep it. And make it soon. And that's it. I have showed you everything. So today was a show and tell. Next time we'll talk about knitting and spinning and all those things and I see how my nails look like. I'm still trying to grow them after the disaster with the gel nails. They are breaking and peeling. So somebody said to me I need to use, um, what's that thing? Apple cider vinegar. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got apple cider vinegar and every day I go <laughs> in the mornings and the afternoons and bubbles have teenage pimples, not pimples, blackheads on his chin. Cats get that apparently from... Plastic. I didn't know that. So if the dishes are dirty or if it's out of plastic, they apparently get it. Some cats get it. So he's got this black heads on the one side, but really thick and ugly. So <laughs> every time I do my nails with the apple cider vinegar, he gets a swatch of apple cider vinegar on his chin as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got some coffee still. So up next is there's some odds and ends of orders I need to finish. I also need to decide if I'm going to reopen my shop. Part of me wants to reopen my shop, but part of me feels like I need to just wait a little bit and see what the economy, economic situation in South Africa does. Um, but I'm still praying about that one. So I'm sure I'll have direction pretty soon. And I need to, I want to, I want to finish some knitting. I want to make more, more bags for knitting. Um, so notion bags and Knitting bags, it wasn't really a thing when I was knitting. You used whatever you had. <laughs> so, it's so interesting to see all these knitting bags recently. So I went, <laughs> I'm supposed to make a quilt for somebody, but I'm not sure I'm going to get around to it because it's just too much work. But while I was there, there's this place that sells scraps. So there's, like I told you before, this is one place called the Gama, which is one of the only material mills in South Africa that's still functioning. And they funk, they do like, upholstery materials and curtaining and mostly cotton so I did buy for the quilt but then I found all of these odds and ends in small pieces but it's big enough for bags so I think I'm going to make some bags soon and um, maybe just put them on my my Instagram account and sell them I mean look at this piece isn't it beautiful look at this now there's some writing on it but I quite like the writing and I like that it's linen and it's it's rough I mean look at this this is just unbelievable it is so beautiful and I love that it's faded in some places and together in other places. So I'm going to make some bags and I'm going to have fun making it. I also am going to work on my grey cascade to 20 um, cardigan that I'm busy with, which my friend sent me now enough wool so I can finish it. Uh, I need to finish these gloves and I need to finish a hat with two hats. Oh, I want to show you another hat. So for this family that's been so kind, the one family that I went to, um, I have, there's like a few family members. So again, my needles are, are 
I, I can't, I'm not going to tell you what needles I'm using because it was ever we can find. <laughs> and it's cheap. I would love to try all these expensive needles, but I'm not going to go there for now. Because these ones work. It's again to that point. Sustainability. So sustainability, I have these needles, so I'm going to use these needles. So unless it's really irritating, I'm not going to look for other needles. And at the moment, they, they work quite well. So this is Hand Spun Angora. Um, Angora is um, mohair. And I have quite a lot of it. And I'm knitting a beanie out of this hand spun. Look at it. It looks like a little halo. I think it's going to be so beautiful. Now, it looks a bit small, but as soon as I block it, it will work. Uh, I'm not going to pull it over my head now. Mm, maybe it is. No, it's not too small. It's going to work. So that's the one thing I'm still busy with. And then at one stage, I did this. And I'm just going to finish it off and make a snoot for a friend of mine for Christmas. Because this year, I am giving presents. For Christmas handmade all over and it's just gonna be like a little snoot but it's nice and it's light and it's airy and then here I've decided I need to figure out how to make a shawl so I've got found a shawl pattern but I want to knit it myself first so I am doing a three-quarter pie shawl um, and I'm doing it in the Angora and I'm doing it basically with just a stocking stitch and I'll add some lace later on and I'm having quite a lot of fun so I've I think it looks right. I'll see. Um, I'm not going to write down the pattern because I don't feel like it, but I'm just going to play with it until it's done. And then I'll have a shawl. Um, oh, sorry. Um, stuff is so irritating. <laughs> yes, so that's me for today. Thank you for visiting with me and coming and chatting along. Um, I know that sometimes, you know, for me, when I get busy and with, also with where I'm living and just my, my life the way it is, I, sometimes it's so nice to to actually have podcasts to go and listen to. I know I don't have a, a lot of people listening to me, but that's not the issue. The issue is that I've, I kind of like like to go and find people that, that has the same interest as I have and to listen to them and to see what they're doing. And that is my aim of this podcast is to just show you what I'm doing and sometimes it's interesting and sometimes it's not and that's fine and and also the big thing is um it's like having tea with your friends and I know I don't know who you are some of you some of you I know but no but it's just so nice to sit here and chat and to show because there's not really people around me where <laughs> I can show I can show them but they don't get it they don't get it all and let me tell me so that's it and then oh, I want to tell you about my garden at the moment it is looking quite well um, everything needs to be replaced so I need to get to the shops to go and get seedlings I've tried to grow my own seedlings but I think the seed I bought was bad so there's a there's a place in in town um, that's got really good seedlings or seeds but I haven't been able to get there because that there's roadworks we have two roads going into the city and the one goes through an atrocious pass with trucks and everything and and houses on the road and goats and d dogs and people and it is just so scary sometimes to drive there the other one there's roadworks so you can sit there for three hours sometimes that's happened on friday with people so i try not to go to town and then for that reason i make do <laughs> which is good for sustainability but i need to find i need to, i think i actually need to go and visit my friend down the road who's got a big vegetable garden and just bum some seeds from her <laughs> because i need to put some new seedlings in um, and then i'm ready for summer and i didn't kill any plants the last while the plants that did die it was plants that's supposed to die so i'm quite proud of myself and the dogs are fine come here Manish. come here Come sit down there. I'll show you this too. Come here. Come. Sit, Felish. Sit. 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 It's not supper time. Say hello to the people. Yes. Come here. Come. Sit. No, don't be so noisy. Sit. Felish. Sit. Yes. So that's the Nadra. This is Malish. And it's supper time, so that's why they're talking. Okay. Go outside. Go out. Fun. Fun. Move. Move. And then this is Bubbles. No. Move. Move. So 
Scratcher has an obedient sphinx. <coughs> Bubbles had a fight with his sister. And now there's a little scratch on his nose. This poor boy. And Pinky's sitting there. She's not going to let me catch her. And that's it. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for visiting. And come pop in next time. Um, if you're following, then you will get a message to say that there's another thing up. If you don't, that's also fine. Just go past and see whenever there's something if you want to see it. Have a nice day.